Hey, all of my friends from High River, how are you? All of you community builders, 193 strong. Just need to get seven more and we'll be at 200. Amazing. It's amazing to me that close to 200 people would say this. I want to make the community a better place. Well, Ian, that's not unusual. Yeah, put a comma there. I want to make the community a better place, and I'm willing to put in 15 weeks of work to do it. I'll get myself better so I can go make the community better. What an incredible statement of the character of all of you people. Awesome, and congratulations. So now what do we got to do? We got to get to work. I tried to make the case in the broadcast that, that you're the answer to High River or any community that the informal leader was the key and that the people closest to the problem are most likely to solve their problems. Their answers are more sustainable, have greater impact, and frankly, are cheaper. And that something spectacular happens when informal leaders are in alignment with one another. When the business community, the faith community, the social profit community, the educational sector, seniors, kids, when they're in alignment around a common goal, each knowing their role and each knowing what winning looks like, something great happens. The dilemma? Times have changed. And the leadership approaches those informal leaders exhibit or utilize probably aren't as effective as they were before. Why? Because we're in a time of transformation. Now you, in your specific instance, that's even exasperated because of the challenges and difficulties and tragedy of a year ago. So we have to ask ourselves, are the leadership approaches I'm using what the times require? And if the answer is no, then we have to say this, well, how do I change? See, that's the final dilemma. 80% of most people's behavior, or 80% of people's behavior is unconscious, especially when it comes to leadership. They just do it. Well. That means there's a high degree of likelihood the leadership approaches we're using may not be relevant or probably aren't relevant. So that means I gotta change. But do you have a process for changing? That's where the whole thing starts. If we're gonna be an effective leader, I've gotta be relevant with my leadership style. But if the world goes schwang like it did for you, then there's a high likelihood my leadership style isn't what's relevant today. So I want you to check out this video on personal change, a process for personal change. We call it the change continuum. It's about 12 minutes in length. Check it out because if you see a skill you'd like to acquire, now you'll have a way to acquire it. If somebody points out a deficiency in your performance, you'll have a way, a systematic way to change. Check it out. Thank you so much, almost 200 of you. Invite your friends, it's never too late. Invite your family and coworkers, it's never too late. Thank you for being a part and willing to grow yourself to build a butter high river. Check out the video. Take care, everybody. So it's called the change continuum, a process for personal change. So I've tried to make the case that things they are a changing. We're in a time of transformation, like Drucker said. And whether you're in a big community or a small community, time of transformation. Whether it's in your house or in your workplace or in your neighborhood, time of transformation. Technology, trust, family unit, blah, 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 change. So how do I change to meet the changing times? That's usually the dilemma because 80% of my behavior is unconscious. It's become deeply rooted. It's not just gonna change because I read a book. It's not gonna just change because I listened to a tape or a, a CD or watched a DVD. It's not gonna change just because I went to some guru seminar. No, it's gonna take sustained effort, 21 days at least, and I better have a process. I went through significant failure in my life. Significant failure. Total, utter failure in my life. Financial failure, took all my stuff away. Moral failure, my wife wanted to leave. Should have, long time ago. Failure, total and utter failure. And I knew I needed to change. Heck, I knew before the crash I needed to change. But I didn't know how. I had no idea how to change. I knew I needed to, but had no idea to get from here to there. So we did as much research as we possibly could about this thing called change. And we came up with the following steps. Now they were in your handout the other day and they're here tonight, today in this email, change. How do you change? What are the linear steps? Let's go through them.
first step, willingness. Are you really willing to change? A lot of people talk change. A lot of people move their lips about change. But when push comes to shove, that's all it is. They're just talking and moving their lips. They're not willing to really change. Well, how would I know you're willing? Well, if you did buy a book, if you, if you did listen to a tape or a, a CD, you know what generation I'm from when I say tape. The number one way that I know you're willing to change is when you stand up and look at another human being and say, I need to change this, will you help me? Oh, I'm never going to admit that. Well, that's why you won't change. See, because if you had everything you needed within you to change that thing, you would have changed a long time ago. Obviously, you don't have it. So why not just say, I need some help. I need someone to give me insight, wisdom, knowledge. I need more than I have now to make the change. Are you willing? And how would I see that willingness? Step number two, because willingness in and of itself is not enough. Step number two, you see it on the handout, education. I've got to go get knowledge beyond what I have now. I need more knowledge. Einstein said, everything within me was only enough to get me where I'm at today. If I want to go any further, if I want to be any better, he said something had to change. And what he usually meant was I got to go get more knowledge. Now here's the beauty of today's day and age. For the first time in the history of mankind, you have all the information you need at your fingertips. What's it called? The University of Google. Yeah. The University of Google, maybe you've gone there before. Or the University of Yahoo. Or the University of whatever the search engine is. You can go get all the information you need about a certain subject matter. You got something that breaks your heart, something that just kills you, that's going on in your neighborhood or community. I care about this. This thing breaks my heart, Ian. Well, how knowledgeable are you? I find out real quick how much something breaks your heart if you have any knowledge. If you can tell me the leading practices and the best practices around the globe, then, I'll, then I know it breaks your heart. Good-hearted, well-meaning people screw things up every day because they don't have any knowledge. So take the time to go get the knowledge, 15 minutes a day. Take the thing that breaks your heart and go spend 15 minutes a day learning about it. Or take the thing that you know you're not very good at and take 15 minutes a day and learn about it by going to the University of Google and typing in best, best practices in whatever breaks your heart or best practices on the thing you want to get better at or best practices on the thing you want to change. You'll get 495,000 responses in 1.29 seconds. And if you're on ExploreNet, it'll be 7.9 seconds. It'll be a little bit slower, but you'll still get the information. And what will you do? You'll read it. You'll take it in and you'll become educated on the subject matter. Educated on the thing you want to change, educated on the thing you want to grow on, educated on the thing you want to impact. Go get the knowledge. Tired of dealing with people who want to make the world a better place but aren't willing to put in the time to get the knowledge to make the world a better place. Willingness. Education. There's only one problem. Education in and of itself is not enough. You know people with fancy letters after their name. I know people with fancy letters after their name. They got a whole bunch of education, but they're dumb as rocks. Dumb as rocks. Why? Because they don't understand the information in real and practical terms. So the next column is understanding. Here's the key to understanding. Read it, write it, hear it, think it, talk about it, do it. If you want to take knowledge and really understand it, use those six things. You got to read a little bit about it. You got to hear a little bit about it. You got to talk a little bit about it. You got to think a little bit about it. You got to write a little bit about it. You got to do a little bit about it. Now I'll really understand the information. I'll take the education and make it practical in application. Step number one, willingness. Step number two, education. Step number three, understand it through that blended learning that I just described. Then, and only then, am I ready to come up with a plan for the next step, action. See, a lot of people jump from first one to action and skip the education and understanding, and then they wonder why their plans suck. 
excuse my language. They suck because they didn't have any education and understanding. So once I have education and understanding, which shouldn't take that long, 15 minutes a day for 30 days. Just take 15 minutes a day for 30 days and go get it. And now I'm ready to put together a plan. Now, I'm not going to go into a long dissertation about building the plan. I'll just say this. The action needs to be focused. There's a lot of people that are just out there taking action but getting nothing done. So the action needs to be focused. How do I focus it? Clearly defined objective. Clearly defined timelines. Clearly defined action steps that I put on paper. Clearly defined objective. What exactly is it you're trying to accomplish? Clearly defined timelines. When exactly are you trying to accomplish it? Clearly defined action steps. What are the action steps necessary to get from here to there? Now we'll have plenty of time to unpack this planning model, but for now, clearly defined objective, clearly defined timeline, clearly defined action steps that I put on paper. Make it real. That's why you're being asked to make a commitment. Maybe not yet, but you're being asked to make a commitment that you submit to me because we're going to put the plan down on paper. Next step, accountability that I put on paper and give to somebody else. Who in your life have you given permission to tell you what to do? Who are you going to take that thing that breaks your heart, go get the education, really understand it, put a plan on paper. Who are you going to give to somebody else and say, now make sure I do this? Accountability. Mario Lemieux, Sidney Crosby, the greatest hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, all of these people all had a what? A coach. Luciano Pavarotti, Aretha Franklin, the greatest singers the world has known throughout the ages, all had a vocal coach. All phenomenal performers have somebody that they let speak into their life. That's called wisdom. Do you have enough wisdom to let somebody hold you accountable? If you really want to change, you'll take that plan, put it on paper, and give it to an accountability partner. Through this process, I can be that but I'm not with you every day. You need to have an accountability partner that's near you, that can really see what you're doing all the time. Me, you're gonna send me an email here and there and talk to me face to face a couple of times and you can, you can shine me on if you know what I mean. But that person close to you, probably not. So who are you? Who's that accountability partner that when push comes to shove, you know you're gonna have to look them in the eye and they're gonna ask, have you done what you said you're gonna do? Final step, analysis. Every once in a while, you got to step off the bus and you got to look at that plan you created to see if it's still relevant, to see if it's still applicable, to see if it's still working. And you can do that with yourself or with your accountability partners. Either way, though, you got to do some analysis. Now, here's the funny thing about that process. Look at the sequence. One, I check my heart and decide. I, am I really willing to change? That manifests itself most profoundly when I say to another human being, not only am I willing to change, but I'm telling you about it, which makes it real. Two, then I go get as much information and education as I possibly can. Because the amount of information and education I have at this moment probably isn't enough, otherwise I, I would have used it. And it could be as simple as taking the next 30 days and taking 15 minutes and going to the University of Google and typing in best practices in whatever that thing is you want to change. Then you got to understand that information. So it's not enough just to read it. You got to think it, you got to write it, you got to hear it, you got to talk about it, and then you got to be some doing of it. So you truly understand the concepts and the information you're trying to be educated on. Then you translate the education and information and understanding into some kind of linear plan, which we'll talk more in depth about at another time. But the simplicity is clearly defined objective, clearly defined timeline, clearly defined action steps that I put on paper to make it real. And then I give it to somebody else. Accountability. Who have I given permission to tell me what to do? Everybody needs a coach. And then every once in a while, I got to stop and analyze. Now, am I saying that if you followed that sequence, I'm guaranteeing change? No. But I'll tell you this, you got a hell of a lot better chance. Because now you're not trying to change, you're training to change. Training implies focus. Training implies direction. Training implies steps. Training implies that you've got it all together to get to that objective you've laid out for yourself. Training. 
over a period of time, as you follow this sequence, it'll just become a part of the 80% of your unconscious behavior. True leadership today understands that we're in changing times and knows they got to be able to change. That's the first step. I've now given you a continuum to do so. Think about it thoughtfully, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, everybody.